Hey, HTDA, and welcome to Craftomation 101. This is a factory automation game that is unlike anything I've ever played. Because in this game, you automate things by literally programming the AI to do it for you. And it is not as easy as it sounds, as you're looking at my completely failed first attempt. But let's start at the beginning. So you land with a nice little rocket frozen with ice on a planet and you actually get to mine the rocks manually and then you combine them into a spark so you smash two rocks together to do that. We can mine some coal and we can combine the coal with the spark and we get fire. And you've seen these, these games before probably but um, you won't have to do this manually for very long because as you can see we get our first stuff from the rocket as we're falling it out and now we have a campfire and if we make another little fire we can put that to the campfire and there we go and now we get a body and a head and if we attach those to each other we have a robot now we can also make a rock and a coal together then we have a brick and we can use that to let the robot eat it and then we have our basically our first source of fuel for our robot. Now, like I said, you actually have to program your robots and the game is going to tell us how to do it. So by default, the robot will be in an idle state, but you can give it commands. So let's say find and pick. And then we can say, well, you go pick a rock and then you go and pick another rock. And then you smash those rocks together and we know we will get a spark. Then if you do that, you can go and find another coal and it will keep the spark in hand as long as it can. So it will have a spark in hand. We can combine it with the coal just like we've done manually before. Combine that and we should get fire. Then we have the fire in the hands and the robot can drop it in the location where we just built our little fire, which is over there. And then we say, well, you're done. So go back to your idle stage. Now, this is very straightforward, but this gets really complicated. Well, at least it gets more complicated really fast. And then it's all about programming it smart. So you actually um, get it to do what you want it to do. But anyway, let's see if this actually works. So let's play and let's see what the robot does. So yep, it goes and picks up two rocks, smashes it together, makes a spark, picks, picks a coal and then drops it into the fire. So the fire is turned on again because the fire does actually burn down, as you can see. But because we now have a robot to automate the delivery of fire to the little campfire we have over here, it should now keep burning because you can stock it up. As you can see, we now have a surplus of one fire in here. Well, we're going to have to do that a few times over, but right now we only have one robot. Now you can see in the ice, there's uh, some robots hiding in the ice over here. There's some items in the ice. And all in all, basically, this is about expanding, making sure you keep your fire burning because otherwise you will thaw. Or sorry, you actually freeze again. So you need to thaw out all the ice. And at some point, we actually want to get things like these seeds over here to actually start terraforming the planet. Now, you don't have to guess at all the recipes. The game actually shows you. Uh, there is a very nice step-by-step -step tutorial that you can just follow along and it will show you pretty much all the basics. Um, as you can see, it already tells us we can make brick by combining some clay and stone. But there's also an objects wiki, so you can basically look up what items there are in the game. Anything that you've already like discovered will be shown. Um, Anything you could be making, but you don't actually know how to make yet will be shown, but without the actual recipe. Um, and yeah, any recipe that you did discover, but you can actually fast track your own recipes if you want. There's, I don't think there's any limitation or gatekeeping or anything like that. It's like technologies you would have to research or anything. If you already know how to make something, you can actually go ahead and do that. So combining a brick and a clay gives us a, a um, clay brick well that's original um, and then we can craft a bonfire by combining that with coal so let's go and do that oh actually our little robot just ran out of fuel so let's make sure we fuel him back up it's actually easier to do it like this i think oh it's not moving there we go as a side note it's really easy to accidentally drop some something on your robot because it will actually eat anything so 
Uh, I actually, at, at, in my very first playthrough, I actually dropped another robot on to, uh, robot part on top of one of the robots and it ate it. So yeah, that was really bad. Anyway, um, we have a new campfire. So let's put that over there. And you can, of course, try to program this robot to deliver here as well. But if we just do it manually, hey, look, we have another robot. Now, the awesome thing is, if we look at this recipe, we can actually copy the program to another robot. Um, like so. I'm not entirely sure if that worked. Did that work? No, it didn't work. So let's try it again. We can copy this to this one. There we go. And now if we click this one, it should already have the program. So now if we want this second campfire to get things delivered to it, we should be able to just change this to this one. Start up the program. And there you go, you can see his, he also starts combining rocks, getting some coal, and he should now start delivering fuel over here. Now, we'll, we'll, we will get another robot by just getting some stone, and you can of course automate that, but honestly it's way easier and more convenient to do, just go like this. Let's uh, take out these rocks over here, because they will get in the way, that gives us a little bit more building space. There we go. Uh, this is a little tedious, but you get the point. Now, the third robot that we got actually programmed to make sparks by just copying one of the other programs, but deleting half of it, basically the second half, and telling it to drop it right at our little base over here. And there we go. We now have a fourth robot. You can also see the terraform slowly coming in. Uh, and because this is flashing, let's click on it. As you can see, we have some technology points. Where we can say, um, hey, let's go upgrade our bots. And as you can see, this is still pretty basic. So there's a couple of commands in here, but this is probably going to be more fleshed out soon enough. But as you can see, you get some early commands. So you can tell it to eat, which is basically to make sure it eats whatever it has in its hands at the moment. Like coal bricks, for example. We also get some more complicated orders. So for example, the energy check, you can tell it to check its ener energy and then do a certain action depending on whether or not it has a certain level of energy. Uh, something else that's going to be extremely valuable is functions. So you can actually make a little program, um, give it a name. So for example, um, make fire, and then define it as a function. So this is like true programming over here. Um, define it as a function and then use that function in more complicated programs. So for example, you could say, make fire bring it here make another fire bring it somewhere else without having to completely program the entire making fire every single time over and over which is exactly what i've done over here so we may make some fire we have a function that we just defined over here that we can now easily put in and we drop it to one fire we make some more we drop it to the second fire and so on so as you can see i have now this one robot supplying all of these three bonfires with fuel now, it's not necessarily the most efficient way to do this. And as you can see, it can barely keep up with the speed because it has to make the fire every time and then supply it. So there's a limit to how many fires one robot can serve, but you get the general idea. Now, we can also um, make storage now because we unlocked some iron and I uh, or steel and I made some and we now have a storage box. So this is an interesting thing because now we can really automate some of our production and just set our bots to start making stuff and put it in a box and just do that non-stop and then we can have other bots picking that up and basically use it somewhere else so there's a couple of things that we're going to need in large amounts uh, one of them is um, bricks in order to make some fuel and the other is fire because fire is used in a lot of recipes and it is used to make these bonfires actually burn Jumping ahead a little bit, I can really show you how this game starts to look when you have all those functions going and a few more bots are running around. Uh, you can actually give your bots colors as well with these uh, paint pools. You can make a, quite a few different types of paint as well, so it's a little easier to track which bot is doing what. I haven't really done my best to really optimize that, but uh, you get the point. But uh, let's get back to functions for a moment. So I have one for making fire and coal bricks, but I also make one for energy check. So the basic way that looks like this is a very simple uh, function that basically says to the robot, hey, uh, check your energy. If you're low, um, go pick up some energy, in this case from batteries. Batteries are a lot better. They're more compli uh, complicated to make, but they actually fully charge your robot. 
um, and then eat it and then go do back uh, go back to whatever you were doing so going back to that robot again um, you can see it does all of that in this little box and then it, it goes and makes some other stuff uh, in order to make steel we actually or steel plates we actually need to combine steel with fire so hey uh, just make your your own fire and then drop what you made off into this box so a nice thing about this is that things that you do regularly like making fire because you need that for a lot of things you can really optimize and you can imagine what this would look like if i would actually have to completely program this out program this out and especially since these things come back uh, for the functions of pretty much every robot because i don't want to manually power my robots every robot is going to have an energy check so making a function out of that just makes your life a lot easier now speaking of making your life easier some of these these functions are going to get pretty complex uh, because you do have a limited amount of functions and you do want to limit those to the things that you're going to use over and over so for example this robot is making steel then he's making magnets then he's making um, more magnets actually and uh, oh no he's picking up the magnets but he's making steel plates in the meanwhile and then he's combining that all into charge plates and then he's combining that with water and then he's making batteries speaking about automation this is this is actually really automation but then in more in the ai type of thing and as you can tell this is a, a lot of programming going on now, I don't know about you, but you're either going to love or hate it because if you don't like programming, uh, you're not going to like this game, that's for sure. However, there's another thing that I wanted to mention because if you do know someone who likes programming or you have someone in your family, maybe a younger child that would like to get into programming or that you want to stimulate to get into programming, I think this game could be the solution to that, basically. I mean, I can imagine kids at school playing this game like being allowed to play this game at school uh, because basically you're you're being taught programming but in a very fun way um it's, it's not completely fleshed out so in order for that to actually qualify for schools it probably needs a little bit more of the tutorial going on or so but even even if it doesn't have that just filling around with this and trying to um, write your own little programs in order to get this going i know i don't know it's cute to look at it's fun it works uh, sometimes it doesn't so this is very a very <laughs> useful to be aware of as well the the robots sometimes will not do what you want them to do and yeah that, that that's a thing anyway um let's get uh, a little bit further into the game and see what that looks like and this is how that looks there's a lot of terraforming going on with trees and stuff i actually have some mushrooms over here that aren't watered but um, yeah there's there's not much to do with the mushrooms but you can grow your own mushrooms at the moment and i completely transitioned into using these furnaces so they run on logs rather than on fire and as you can see they burn for a very long time on a single log so this is a lot more efficient way to heat up your entire area and this really shows you how the game encourages you to pivot into new things rather than just doing more and more of the same. Uh, as you can see, I am now on an infinite objective, so the game isn't finished yet, as should be obvious, hopefully. But it's really interesting and it really shows a lot of promise. Um, I haven't really used a lot of the new programming stuff that you unlock throughout the game. It basically allows your robots to interact with each other and with the environment in more complex ways for the main reason that there's really no use to actually use these options at the moment but again it shows a lot of promise now there is a lot more coming uh, if i can find the button yeah there we go so you actually get different types of robots later on in the game classes a lot of more things to do with the programming which is a little bit bare bones at the moment fishing for some reason i don't know um and a programmable brewery which i have no idea what that will do or how it will work um but it, i don't know it shows that there's a lot more coming and all of this at least most of this looks really interesting so um yeah looking forward to seeing what that looks like now if you uh, like this game one of the things you can actually already do to help out the developers is put it on your wish list it, it kind of helps them uh, gauge how much interest there is it might help them with investments marketing etc so just a thing to consider if this is something that you think might be fun um, i will likely make some guides on how to organize your bots um, and program them and kind of make sure your entire factory doesn't come to a standstill but i will do that once the game is actually in early access because as you could see there's so much more new stuff coming that it doesn't make sense to make a guide already um, especially considering the game hasn't actually been released into early access just yet um yeah so i think that's it for now 
there there's a lot more to come but for now i hope you enjoyed this preview let me know in the comments if you enjoyed this and if you would like to see more and what you enjoyed or didn't enjoy about this game as well for now if you're still here you're awesome and i hope to catch you in the next one